will he be able to get the car put back together and running before my parents leave for California, which I believe is tomorrow. Things are not looking good. Nope, things are looking very, very bad. And this is the face of defeat. I am discouraged and really frustrated and I think I've just basically lost my faith in humanity. Maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration. Good morning, guys. I hope that you are having a better day than we're having so far. Um, I thought I would come out to the garage, despite the fact that it's a mess. If you didn't see our video where our garage flooded, someone commented about how messy our garage is, and yes, our garage is messy, but it's also a garage. We don't have a ton of storage space in here. But I wanted to come out here because I wanted to show you guys something that makes no sense to me. If you have not been following all the conflict and drama, you may not know everything that's gone on with <laughs> my sister's car. Um, I will tell you a very short version, which is her car broke down, we called a mechanic that was supposed to fix it, and I'm pretty sure we got scammed by the mechanic. You can learn the longer version in this video here. Um, <laughs> but, Yesterday, we finally ended up towing it to a different mechanic's office, even though today, today he was supposed to come back. The thing that doesn't make sense to me about the scam is that he left stuff here. For example, he left two of these ramps. I know he left other things, but these are the only things that I know for sure are his, because I don't know what tools are ours and what tools aren't. It doesn't make sense to me what the game of this whole scam is. Um, so yeah, I think that we got uh, kind of screwed on Craigslist, as it were. Um, so <sighs> we're on a little bit of a time crunch now because of all of the drama that happened with this super, super sketchy mechanic. If you didn't see yesterday's video, you may not know um, uh, that this whole situation is really taking a toll on us. Um, Kenneth took a personal day off of work yesterday in order to try and get the part that Talitha needs to get her car fixed because we are in such a close time crunch. So if you didn't see yesterday's video, I'll link that over in the iCard, wherever it is too, and you can check that out as well. Um, we came so, so close and uh, I wasn't sure if we were gonna make it because Talitha and I were texting back and forth. And like in the briefest minutes before they closed, Ken managed to get the part off. So now we're in the second half of the time crunch, which is will the honest mechanic, the real one that has a garage that was recommended to us by one of our lovely neighbors, um, will he be able to get the car put back together and running before my parents leave for California, which I believe is tomorrow. When you're watching this, this is Friday. Now, originally when we weren't sure whether we were being scammed or not, um, and Ken was being kind of optimistic and I was being kind of cynical, uh, we had scheduled the guys to show up again today. And again today, they haven't shown up. Um, as far as they know, the uh, scamsters on Craigslist, they don't know that we know they're scammers. So, um, anyways, Talitha called the police, uh, and the police seemed kind of uninterested, especially since they're in California and we're in Arizona and there's different jurisdictions and all this stuff. But Talitha was basically like, I think this is organized. This is some kind of organized thing. Um, because the police were able to determine that the scammers or these mechanics that came out and worked um, were using what are called burner numbers. So they're numbers that you call and uh, when they answer, like, they can just throw the number away. Ken uses burner numbers all the time so that his kids can't harass him, his students, I mean, can't harass him when he doesn't want them to, but so that when he needs to do tutoring time, he can do tutoring time. Um, so burner numbers have their place, but basically we've reached a point now where we can't get a hold of either of them, which means um, the money for the work that he did the day he was here is gone, which whatever, because he did actually work, and that's the thing that's crazy to me, and that doesn't make sense. 
He did actually work that day, which he got paid for. And there's more money to be made in being honest and taking care of the problem, right? Like if he had just fixed the thing, he would have made more money than just disappearing. So we paid him for the work he did that day, and then we also paid him the money for a new part, which we think is what he stole, was the money for the new part. But what doesn't make sense to me is he left all these tools and stuff here. And I also don't understand, and maybe it's just because I'm not in the brain of someone that is a complete jerk that's just screwing people over, what his game plan was. If they were just going to steal the money, why did they continue to talk to us? There was no reason to keep us on the hook and keep us waiting like they should have just disappeared with the money and so that's something that I don't understand and I also don't understand why he left all these tools here that are worth something at least so either well I was thinking that maybe he had some kind of substance abuse problem and his company was covering for him but now that we know that there are they used a burner number I feel like it was premeditated um, anyways, we dropped the uh, part off this morning. I dropped it off with the girls after I dropped Ken off at work. And we're just waiting to hear back from them. And at this point, it's just kind of like fingers crossed. I hope this car gets back to California. Um, and by the time you're watching this, um, we'll have a better idea of how it all turned out. I really like the guy at the garage. Um, but at this point, I just don't know that Talitha's going to get her money back, which is just... Uh, really frustrating and what's more frustrating is I wonder how many other people these guys are doing this to. I feel um, I feel I felt really bad for being cynical and now I feel bad for my naivety like I feel like I was too balanced I should have been too cynical or too naive because at first I was too naive and I was totally like oh yeah this is totally fine and then I was really really cynical and I felt badly about that but now I'm like no, I was right. And it just kind of, it's like confirmation bias. I always feel like mechanics are lying to me. It's, what is it about mechanics that it's so easy to feel like they're lying? And for me, it's, I feel like it's because I don't know anything about cars. And so it's really easy for them to just make up nonsense. And I just have to believe them because I have no idea what they're talking about. But I thought that since Ken knows about cars, that that prevents him from getting taken advantage of. And clearly, that's not what happened here, so. Things are not looking good. Nope, things are looking very, very bad, you guys. I just got a text from Ken that is really, really not the text I wanted to get today of all days, which was, hey Heidi, I need you to go back to the mechanic that you went to this morning, pick up the parts that I spent all day getting out of the junkyard, and bring them back to me. And I was like, what? And apparently, you guys, the parts that Ken uh, spent all that energy working on getting out of the junkyard yesterday didn't, uh, didn't work. So now I have to go back to the mechanic who obviously didn't manage to be able to fix sleep his car, get those parts back and get them back to Ken. It is 2.30 in the afternoon and I think he's going to attempt to go to the junkyard again, um, but they close at five. So hopefully he can get there before they close. Hopefully, I don't even know if he, how junkyards work. I don't know if you can replace parts. So I really hope that he'll be able to exchange it and get the money back and we didn't just waste more money as we've been prone to doing on this car. Um, so anyways, I'm hoping that he will be able to go to the junkyard, replace the parts, and hopefully be able to get new parts out. But you guys, he spent like all day pouring energy into getting those parts out. So, um, we're really running low on time. Like, it's probably going to take me an hour to get to his work, and then we have to get to the car, and oh no! So I have to get the, the parts and then I actually have to go back to the house because I forgot the tools. I forgot the tools at the house. So he won't be able to take things out of the junkyard without those tools. And we're running so close to the deadline, guys. I don't know, at this point, it's gonna take a miracle to get this car fixed. I don't know if it's gonna happen. 
and I don't know what that's gonna mean if it's not fixed by the time my parents have to go to California. Now, I've been saying they need to go on Saturday. I don't know if that's Saturday evening, but then my dad seemed to think it might be Sunday morning. So maybe, maybe, like, with a little bit of hope, it will be, um, it will be fixed tomorrow. But that's com entirely contingent upon us getting this stuff from another junkyard. All right, here's to getting the parts quickly so I can go get the tools out of the garage too. The camshafts are still at his machine shop or something. I don't know what that means. It's not here because I guess he didn't know that we were coming. So um, he's calling his guy. This guy is so nice. You guys, if you're out here, J2's garage, wonderful. Um, so that's just like more icing on the cake. Um, so we'll see. Hopefully it can get here on time. Hi. The camshafts are still at his machine shop. So I drove out here and I forgot to get your tools out of the garage. So I'm driving back to our garage to go get your tools. I'm at the at his garage, at, J, at JT's garage. I'm driving back to our house to get your tools while they get the camshafts back from the machine shop. And then I'm gonna come back and get it. So that's the update. Okay, thank you. Um, don't worry, I mean, it's not a big deal at this point. Like, I don't think that I can get to a junker and, and, and pull it apart um, all the time. But yeah, I, th I think we're just going to have yeah. to figure out a different way to get Talitha's car to California. I went home and I picked up his tools and then um, by the time I got back to the auto shop, they had uh, the parts back from their machine tester place. I don't know what it's called. Um, so now the girls and I are on our way to Ken's work. but. You know, I just, it's really discouraging. The thing that I find so frustrating about this scam, apart from obviously um, the money loss, is the time. Um, if we had known that this was a scam, like, hold on Irene, shh, 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 shh. If we had known that this was a scam like two weeks ago, it would already be finished and taken care of. And at this point, it just looks like it's not gonna happen. We picked him up. He's in the car, guys. And this is the face of defeat. <laughs> I am just... I, it's, it's just, it's, there's no way. There's no way. So, there's no longer any chance of this car getting up and running by tomorrow afternoon because even, even if I were to make it to the junker instantaneously, which, Which isn't gonna happen. Not gonna happen. I would have less than a half hour to pull out the parts that I needed. That took, that took me three all hours. Day yesterday. All the junkyards to close at five. It's four twenty right now, so that's not happening today. So if I go tomorrow morning, even if I get the right when they open up and get the part, I have to get it back to the mechanic. Unless they're brand new, like for whatever reason, the previous owner just was pristine in their keeping of the the vehicle and didn't drive it very much. Unless that's the case, uh, they're gonna have to machine the parts down and the machine shop is closed until Monday. Oh, I didn't know that. So he that's, didn't tell me that. That's a new development. So basically, if you guys haven't watched the other videos, the problem is is that my parents needed to drive to lead this car back to California so she could get it. Right. But they leave for California like Sunday first thing in the morning or or Saturday late in the afternoon. I don't know which it is, but tomorrow basically. Right. Um, and it's, it's just not gonna happen. So now we've got this whole extra issue of, I have no idea, I have no idea how we're gonna get to leave this car. Um, and in the meantime, the scammers had a burner number. So the likelihood of them, of us being able to get our money back is basically like none. So we've wasted money, we've waste, wasted time, and she's still not gonna get her car. I'm pretty peeved right now. Um, where, while we have not, we, Hyde and I have not lost financially a but lot. But Talitha has. Talitha has. Um, 
we, though, are definitely paying a price in terms of time and effort. And so, energy-wise, I have exerted upwards of 25 to 30 hours of time. I think you have spent this. more hours put into this than just that. Probably. And that's just the physical that's, labor. That's not me even working on a car, me. looking for things, mm -hmm. digging through junkyards, etc. Um, you know, I use a personal day for this and I'm just, I'm really just miffed right now because knowing what I know now, there's no reason for me to use the personal day. Um, like, well, yesterday was just a waste because it was, yeah. the parts, it was a total waste the because, parts weren't even useful. Right. So all that effort, all that energy into getting those parts is just gone. What'd you figure out? What's this? What show, this? show us how it works. Clock. It's a, a clock. clock? What, what do you do? This, yeah. this, okay. this, and then the clock count to ten. It actually counts to twelve, Roslyn. How did you learn this? Who told you this? Did Grandpa show you? No, I'll be scissors show me. Somehow I don't think that's how that happened. I think you figured it out. Did you just figure it out? Yeah. That's pretty that's cool, huh? Neat. You could count to ten. You can count to more than 10, actually. Oh, Irene, what are you doing? No. She's like, this doesn't belong here. I'm displeased. <laughs> so we are at my parents' right now because we are just picking up the car. But the kids were hungry, so we snuck in. Thank you, Thank you Irene. We snuck into their, to their house to steal food because we were like, it's rush hour and we're going to be stuck in traffic for the next two hours if we go home right now. So we made a little stop off. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Irene and I are just hanging out in a parking lot while I am editing it. And don't worry, I don't drive with her in my lap. We're stopped. She just wanted to nurse. Um, but I realized we didn't end the vlog. Oh my goodness. I realized we didn't end the vlog. So subscribe if you haven't. Check out this video if you haven't. Subscribe right here, check out that video, and um, hit the bell so you can see how we're going to end up getting this car to Talitha, because I have no idea. Anyways, uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, guys.